going to start now so then we just probably need to find her she's not okay thank you she must just go to the south east for micro update good morning everyone um just quickly if anyone hasn't registered yet if you can just please make your way out to the registration tables if you have registered please stay seated we're going to start the meeting soon thank you
Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, shareholders and our guests. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to the second general annual general meeting of the old mutual Bulatzilla retail scheme. Albeit the first annual general meeting since the ordinary shares in the company were issued pursuant to the public offering in November of 2022. By way of introduction, I am Zakanit Lawrence Natengwe, the chairman of the board. In terms of Article 17.3 of the company's memorandum of incorporation, here in after I will refer to it as MOI, I am duly authorized to chair this AGM. And on stage, I'm joined by Raymond David Fenner, who is our independent director on the board of the company. And Raymond is also the chairman of the company's audit committee. I'm also joined on my left-hand side by Buisiwe Makunga, who is our lead independent non-executive director, and she is also a member of our audit committee. As communicated on Friday the 11th of August 2023, this AGM is taking place by means of electronic communication and in person here at the Indaba Hotel Conference Center, which is situated from an address perspective, William Nicole Drive, corner of Peter Venning Road in Four Ways, Sentin, here in Johannesburg. And I, I was strictly instructed that I need to give also the postal code, which is 2191 here in South Africa. This is permitted by the company's act and is being held in accordance with the company's MOI. We have retained the services of the meeting specialists, who I will refer to as TMS throughout this AGM, as well as Singular Services, who serves as our administrator. TMS is assisting us with the virtual hosting of this AGM, and Singular Services is at this venue and will be assisting throughout the AGM with any queries you may have during the course of today. Please refer to the help desk area that will be available post the AGM for any questions you may have. The, the desk will be outside. Singular services will also act as scrutineer for purposes of checking entitlements to vote at this AGM and for counting the votes cast on the resolutions that will be proposed at this AGM. Please take note that in terms of section 63 of the Companies Act of 2008, of the Republic of South Africa, only persons who are who, whose identities have been verified to the satisfaction of the chairman, myself, have the right to participate in and vote at this AGM. I just want to repeat that. If your identity have not been verified to the satisfaction of the chairman, you don't have the right to participate and vote at this AGM. This extends to persons who are in possession of a valid proxy form, which has been filed in accordance with the notice of annual general meeting, and shareholders who are reflected on the company's register as at the record date for this AGM, and the record date being Friday the 1st of September, 2023. Before we begin with the formalities of the meeting, I will hand over to TMS to take you through some of the guidelines that are applicable for this meeting, TMS. Thank you, Chairman. Here with a few pointers on how to navigate the meeting platform. There are three ways to ask questions for shareholders and guests present here today at Indaba Hotel. Please raise your hand and we will call on you to address the meeting. For online participants, please click the raise your hand icon. Once you have been identified by your meeting convener, your microphone will be unmuted and you will be able to ask questions and engage with online participants and with us here at the venue. Online participants may instead wish to submit questions or comments via the chat box using the Q&A icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Please type your question and click send. Your question will be published and answered during the course of the meeting. Only a verified shareholder or beneficial owners of shares will be entitled to ask questions during this meeting. Here with a few pointers on how to cast your votes. All beneficial owners or their representatives who have requested the right to vote 
would have received a link to the voting platform to either their phone number or email address. Please click on the Vote Now link and it will direct you to the voting platform. Are there any share beneficial owners who registered for voting but have not received active access to the virtual voting platform? If you have not received a voting link, please use the Q&A button to notify the moderator who will attend to your request. You will notice that the voting platform contains all the resolutions which have been published in the notice of annual general meeting with your votes automatically defaulted to abstain. You may vote on all the resolutions simultaneously by defaulting all your votes as Thank you, TMS. Joining me this morning, as I've already indicated, we have representatives of, you know, I mean, we've got members of our board. We also have representatives of our company secretary, as well as an additional board member in Taskin Ismail, who is sitting right in front of us. Thank you very much. We are also pleased to have representatives of our external auditors, as well as legal advisors in attendance. I was joking earlier on that it is easy to identify our legal advisors. They are wearing black and white, which is part and parcel of the profession. Before proceeding with the formal business of this meeting, I would like to take a few moments to reflect on the following. I'm honored to share that Bulatzila is 100% black owned, of which 51% is black women owned and 29% is black youth owned. Over, thank you, you can clap, thank you very much. <laughs> Over 38,000 black South Africans, individuals, small businesses, and groups such as Trust and Stock Files have qualified for shares in this transformative empowerment scheme, which bears testimony to our very clear transformative objective. Some of you may know that the number of applications received and the level of interest in this scheme far exceeded expectations, resulting in an oversubscribed offer. Due to the overwhelming number of applications received, not all applicants unfortunately were successful or were even awarded the number of shares applied for. Some members of the public made payments without supporting documents or references, which is unfortunate also. These applicants are unfortunately unsuccessful and are still owed refunds. We have run a number of radio campaigns to announce this and to continue to drive financial education around these refunds. Please help us to get word out there in our communities if you know of any friends or family who paid for the shares but did not receive a share allocation. This could mean that they are owed a refund. I won't keep you any longer, but before we get into the business of the AGM, I would like to, to, you know, to thank every one of you for the interest that you have shown in Bulatzila, be it in the form of encouraging fellow community members to apply for shares or for the information communicated on family WhatsApp groups. We appreciate this. Today, ordinary South Africans in the townships and in the rural areas, they have got a say in a great company such as Old Mutual, which was formed in 1845. You have a say in the future strategic direction of this great organization, which is an African champion. To our partners and stakeholders, thank you for all your outstanding effort and time spent supporting applicants and shareholders on this journey, which has not gone unnoticed. We have truly delivered a broad-based inclusive share scheme. Thank you very much. We now move on to the business of the AGM. In accordance with Article 11.6 and 11.7 .7 of our MOI, I have been advised and I'm advised by Singular and TMS that the quorum requirements for this AGM have been met. As there is at least one shareholder present or represented today, and the persons present at this meeting are entitled to exercise in aggregate at least 0.5% of all voting rights capable of being exercised at this meeting. Accordingly, by powers vested in me, I declare this AGM properly constituted and correct. The notice of this AGM 
sorry, the, the notice of the availability of the annual financial statements was given on Tuesday, the 27th, 2023. 27th of June, 2023. The notice convening this AGM was also made available on the company's website and on Singular's website and distributed on Friday, the 11th of August, 2023. Consequently, the requisite notice for this AGM and annual financial statements required in terms of the Companies Act and the Companies MOI has been given. I therefore propose that the notice be taken as read. Is there anyone who disagree with the statements I've made around the availability of the annual financial statements as well as the notice for the AGM. Appears as if there's none, let me continue. Before we turn to the proposed resolution, I would like to give beneficial owners, yourselves, or the representatives, the opportunity to pose any questions that you may have in respect of the business of this meeting and the resolutions to be considered in particular. For good order, I would like to deal with all questions in a single session, if I may. Mr. Raymond Fenner, the chairperson of our audit committee, Cardas Dixon, who is our audit partner, are present to respond to any questions you may have on the annual financial statements. I will also draw on the expertise of other board members, such as Taskin and Buisiwe, where necessary. May I ask TMS and Singular to recap again on how you can ask a question? TMS. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Here with a few pointers on how to navigate the meeting platform. There are three ways to ask questions. For shareholders and guests present here today at Indaba Hotel, please raise your hand and we will call on you to address the meeting. For online participants, please click on the raise your hand icon. Once you have been by, identified by our meeting convener, your microphone will be unmuted and you will be able to ask your questions and engage with online participants and with us here at the venue. Online participants may instead wish to submit questions or comments via the chat box using the Q&A icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Please type your question and click send. Your question will be published and answered during the course of the meeting. Only a verified shareholder or beneficial owners of shares will be entitled to ask questions during this meeting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, TMS. Thank you very much. Please, may I ask that you start your question by first introducing yourself by your full name, confirming that you are a beneficial owner or that you uh, represent a beneficial owner, including the full names of such beneficial owner. Please, could I kindly ask you to ask no more than two questions at a time in order to allow other participants or beneficial owners to ask questions? And if time permits, I will be happy to provide an opportunity for subsequent questions. So now I will open for questions, but first let me hear from TMS. Do we have any questions online? Chairman, let us give just one moment to see if any raised hands or written questions come in. So far, nothing online, Chair. Uh, okay, there has just uh, come in a question from uh, shareholder Tamara Chetty. Uh, the question is, thank you for providing the December 2022 annual financial statements. Can you please share the interim audited financial statements as of 30 June 2023 so I can evaluate the following Number one, dividend policy. Number two, dividend received from Old Mutual of CA 25 million rand versus dividend declared of CA 5 million rand. Number three, how is the preference share debt being reduced? Please provide your opinion in, on the above in lieu of not having access to the 30 June 2023 annual financial statements. Thank you. Raymond, can I have a mic, please, for Raymond to, to help with answering the question? Thank you. Just help me. Yeah, so thank you. The 30th of June financial statements is not available at this stage. 
Um, the second question is a dividend policy. I think the dividend policy is quite clear. Um, we will distribute any dividend that we receive after paying the taxes due, um, any operating expenses, after paying the preference share funding, and then whatever is left should be 15%, which will distribute to shareholders. The third question. Hi there. So in terms of the preference share funding, we have in terms of the rules of the scheme set out that any dividend that comes into the retail company, which is based off the all mutual dividend that gets paid twice a year, will use 85% of that cash to first try and settle as much of the funding as we can. The 15% of the cash that remains will settle some costs and then the board will determine whatever's left over, we'll then look to declare to all of you as our shareholders. So we're trying to get as much of that preference share funding paid off over the 10 years as possible, because what that does is the second your debt is paid off, whatever is left in that company belongs straight out to all of our shareholders. Hopefully that helps. Thanks, thanks, Taskin. Any other question online, TMS? Yes, Chair, we have a question from shareholder Lungilem Sebenzi. The question is, what is the current value of an old mutual share? So the old mutual limited share is listed on the JSE, the London Stock Exchange, and a few other exchanges throughout Africa. As of close of trading yesterday, one old mutual limited share was worth 12 rand 69. And you'll remember when we started the Bulatela share scheme, our retail company, which all of you own shares in, bought those old mutual limited shares for 10 rand 22. So as of yesterday, those old mutual shares are sitting at 12 rand 69. So you can see that there already the really has been some value created in the scheme. Thank you. Thank you, Tuskin. Any more questions? Chairman, no raised hands and no written questions at this time. Thank you. Let me move into this room. We have got a hand right there at the back. Just remind again, full names first. I would like to ask Is the mic on? Just check if it's on. Yes. Uh, I just want to ask one question. On maturity of these shares, is the taxman going to tax me? Baba, you said, is the taxman going to tax you? Is that the question? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, because Keen was the person that constructed me. Is it on? Let me just check. It's on. Okay. So yes, sorry, uncle, the taxman always takes his slice. <laughs> so there are two areas where the taxman will want his slice of the pie. The one is every time the retail company declares a dividend, you pay 20% of tax and it's called dividend withholding tax. The second place where the taxman will want his slice is whenever you sell a share, he will want something called capital gains tax. But that'll only happen when you actually sell your share. For now, the scheme is locked in for a period of five years. In about five years' time, we will list this retail company on an exchange, at which point you can decide to buy more shares or sell. If you decide to sell, capital gains tax will kick in, and that's a very specific calculation. And then the first, the first tax piece is on dividends, which we are hoping to declare every single year for the duration of the scheme. Every time you receive a dividend, it'll already be net of the 20% that goes to taxmen. Hopefully that helps, Uncle. Thank you. Any other? Here we go. We've got a question here, right here in front. Yeah, your full names first. Thank you. Untlarani Putlamini speaking. Thanks. Uh, I just want to check now, since she has advised us about the lock-in period, I want to check now in terms of the share certificates if they will be issued at the end of the lock-in period or just advise us about share certificates when we'll be issued share certificates. Thank you. 
apparently the camera can't see me if I'm on the floor. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. I yeah. told you we should have arranged a chair for you here. So I think the question was on share certificates. Yeah. Okay, so this is a dematerialized scheme. And what that means is we try and do everything online. But if you do want a share certificate, you are allowed to ask for a share certificate in terms of the rules of the scheme. All you have to do is contact one of the singular individuals. They'll have a table outside. They'll take your details and they'll be in contact. Thank you. I've got a question right at the back, sir. Thank you. Uh, Albert Spego. Thank you. Bill. I just wanted to know when is the shares going to mature? You know, where you say now, if you want to sell or or somebody you want to sell to somebody, when is it going to be? So the whole scheme is locked in for a period of 10 years. We launched the scheme in November of last year. So that was, I think it was the 24th or 27th of November. No. 10 years from now, the whole scheme will mature. But we didn't want everyone to wait for 10 years before being able to trade. So what we'll do is we'll list this company on an exchange five years from now. At that point, if you want to sell your shares, you can sell them on the exchange. But if you want to keep them, the whole thing is locked for 10 years. Hey, I'm looking for hands in the room. Uh, I've got one more and a repeat question later. Go, go for it, ma'am. Uh, my name is Charlotte. I just want to find out that is it possible for us to top up even before the shares matures? Or should we wait for five years, then we can top up instead of selling? Unfortunately, we would have loved to allow trading from day one of the scheme, but the administration behind that is quite heavy and quite costly. So we decided to keep the scheme locked for, for the first five years, which means nobody can buy or sell. So no new people can come into the scheme. But the second we've got the scheme listed on an exchange, trading is allowed. So anybody who's in the scheme, you'll have to wait four more years. Once it's listed, you can buy more or sell. People who aren't in the scheme at the moment will have to wait for that listing to be able to buy in. Thank you. The gentleman there again. Uh, I'm back again. Thank you, sir. <laughs> no problem. Uh, since we've got this interest rate per annum, during the course of five years, is it going to, to be up again or it will remain like this up until five years? Thank you. So it's the question. question about the dividend and the amount of the dividend that we declare each year. Can you just repeat the question, sir? My question says, since we are on this level of interest rate, during the course up to five years, mm -hmm. is going to be increased or it will go like this up to the PTI. So the debt in the scheme is based on, well, it's actually preference share funding, which is another form of uh, debt funding. We have to pay a coupon every single year to whoever provided us with that debt funding. And that coupon, which is equivalent to an interest, is based on the prime rate. Now, prime changes on a regular basis. Right now, the prime rate is quite high, but indications are from a government perspective and from a Saab perspective that prime will hopefully start coming down at some point in future. We would hope that that prime rate does come down, which means that our retail co has to pay less of a coupon. That is the hope. We'll have to wait. We don't really have control over what that prime rate does, though. And then on the dividend side, which is the income for all of our shareholders, the dividend is based on how well All Mutual as a share does and how many dividends All Mutual actually declares every single year. And you would hope that that number goes up over the next 10 years. The, the lady is right in front. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Hazel Maseko. I'm one of the shareholders. Thank My you. question will be, is it possible for one to change the banking uh, details or the bank account? Because like, for instance, mine, the one that I provided before, it's it's a disaster. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> so now, since I never have any income, so I would like to apply for a new bank account. So is it possible for me to, to give you the new bank account, maybe? 
Yes, absolutely. So all of your details are loaded on the Singular system. So Singular is the company that manages the retail scheme for us. All you have to do is either get in touch with someone um, sitting outside at the table now, or you phone into the Singular contact center and they'll be able to update your details. Right now, we've got the details that you filled in in your application form, but you can change it at any time. Yeah, and Old Mutual does also provide a banking account too, called Money Account, and we are starting a bank too at the same. <laughs> they are shareholders, right? They are shareholders. So as shareholders, they must bank with Old Mutual. Yeah, thank you. Any other question? Thank you, sir. What happens in an event? Yeah, my name is Gladys Maimela. Thank you. Ma what happens in an event whereby somebody dies? What will happen to my shares? Yeah. I think the shares are going to, I'm going to ask um, my lawyers to help me here, but if memory serves, your shares will go into an estate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so the, in the event of a, of, a, of a death, the shares would be transferable into the estate in the ordinary course. Um, but to the extent that in the winding up of the estate, those shares are not able to be transferred to another qualifying black person, those shares would then be transferred to the warehousing trust and the, the relevant consideration would be paid out to the um, intended beneficiary. So just to expand on that, we've got what we call a parking lot in the retail scheme called the warehouse trust. Because our scheme is meant to be locked in for five years before trading happens, and it's meant to be locked in for a full 10 years before the scheme unwinds, there may be instances where either there's a company in the scheme who's no longer complying with the rules and maybe is not 100% black owned, or somebody passes away where you actually need the cash behind those shares to go into the estate. We didn't want that individual or the estate to have to wait for the full 10 years. So there is a facility in our warehouse trust where we can facilitate a cash payment yeah and one of the things that you can do is to just get into contact with the financial advisor your own financial advisor to help you you know with 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 your financial estate if i may use that word and if if you don't you can also get in touch with old mutual we have got an online uh, will process that they will be in a position to help you deal with uh, issues of bequeathing your, your estate to other people. So there are other solutions that are available out there. And Auntie, I'm going to ask Jesse, who is at the back there, just to explain the detail of how that would happen. Yeah. Uh, um, Thank you. Here, as a representative of Singular Financial Services, I can explain that further. In the event that someone passes away, um, there's a process that which is conducted by the Masters of the High Court. So um, whoever is, is responsible for your estate, whether it's someone within your family or your financial advisor, would need to go through that process, obtain the relevant letter of authority, and then they can act on your estate. They can then contact us to inform us that you've now passed on, and we will then assist with the relevant documentation that will need to be submitted to the Masters of the High Court for them to issue out a letter of authority, and then we can um, execute the instructions of that letter of authority. Okay. Just give me an opportunity to go back online and check if we do have hands or questions online. TMS. Thank you, Chairman. We do have a couple of raised hands. We have a shareholder, Kona Chabalala. Shareholder, if you'd like to ask your question, please unmute your own microphone if you could. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity. My name is Akona Chavalala, as already said. So I just wanted clarity on the payments of dividends. Um, I had a lady who's the speaker who's answering the question speak about the payment thereof, but I just didn't get it whether is this going to be after the five years or, or you know, when exactly. Thank you. Shall I address each question? Yeah, please, please. Hopefully, we don't have to make you wait five years before we pay you a dividend. 
Luckily, we are going to be paying a first dividend in the scheme in November. We'll be using the bank accounts that you gave us as part of your application form. So if those are not the correct banking details, please do double check with Singular. We'll pay dividends as and when the board determines that there's enough cash within the company to be able to return something to shareholders. So we've been very fortunate to be able to declare a dividend in year one of our scheme and long may that continue. Just make sure you go back to the annual financial statements and read them again to understand what your dividend is, yeah? Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Taba Mutawu. Uh, since where we are the shareholders, in terms of uh, um, unemployment, how are we gonna, how uh, can we, apply for or to or we shall have a platform for us as a shareholders to apply for some job. Apply for jobs at all mutual. Yes. Okay. I'll let you take this one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, old mutual does advertise jobs on our jobs portal. And if you have got the relevant uh, qualifications, experience that are required for that particular job, you will be considered with other applicants. And there is a recruitment and selection process that you know applicants have to go through. And if you are a successful candidate, you will be appointed. But if not, it means you will have to keep trying. Not only at Old Mutual, but the broad financial services industry has got many opportunities that are available. So there are no guaranteed jobs for shareholders. Let me just put it like that. There are no guaranteed jobs. Yeah, thank you. Uh, can I start? Did you ask a question before? Then let me start with him here, and then I'll come to you. Don't worry, I'll definitely come to you. Let me start. Go my, for it, sir. My name is Lucas Mujai. I'm a shareholder. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would like to know what's the difference between a preference share okay. and an ordinary share? And is it possible for an ordinary shareholder to buy a preference share? Yeah. No. Thank you for that question. <laughs> So an ordinary share entitles you to exactly what you have the right to do today. You can vote to add or replace board members, you sign off the annual financial statements, and you receive a dividend that is tied to the actual performance of the retail company. So if the retail company does really well and has tons of cash, it all belongs to the ordinary shareholder. If retail co does really, really badly and there's no profits to share, that is the stake of the ordinary shareholder. A preference share is a very specific type of instrument in terms of company law. It only entitles you to very specific rights. So normally a preference shareholder doesn't get involved in selecting board members. Uh, unless it's a term of the actual preference share, which in this specific instance, our preference shares are given to us by all mutual limited money. So all mutual gets as part of the preference shareholding terms to appoint two directors to the board. But the independents are for the ordinary shareholders to appoint. Mm -hmm. The second difference is the preference share is entitled to what is called a coupon. Now that coupon is a set percentage. It's dependent on prime, but it can't be more or less than whatever that calculation spits out. So it doesn't matter how well the retail company does or how badly the retail company does, that preference shareholder is owed that X amount of money every single year. So it doesn't have the same exposure as an ordinary shareholder does. Normally, the ordinary shares in a retail scheme are what are advertised and bought by the public. Preference shareholding is normally by a big bank or a company to fund that individual company. It's very rare for members of the public to be able to buy preference shares. Thank you. The gentleman here, and then after that, this, that gentleman and you. Uh, thank oh. you very much. My name is Ndivo Pungo. I am a shareholder in my capacity as a natural person. I also represent uh, juristic entities. That is a Kangosa B2I LTD and Pungo Livestock uh, B2I LTD. Now, as far as I can see on the notice, uh, as far as voting is concerned, uh, as shareholders, we are going to vote whether or not we still prefer uh, 
a director. Yes. But uh, in the event that shareholders would like to nominate their own, mm. what would be the process? Okay. And how would that happen uh, in, a, in a setting where we don't know each other? Okay. On nothing, we don't. We also don't know anything about each other. But mm. To be introduced, uh, but then please do explain the process of how board members and directors come into place. Thank you. I'm also concerned that in a entity that is supposed to be an empowered entity, mm -hmm. as a black economic empowerment company, the distribution thereof of designated groupings, how will you then, does it only need to reflect at a shareholders, uh, on the shareholder base or at the executive and management level as well? Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Do you want, and Another then the lawyers, time. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, one moment while we resolve the feed. Apologies for the technical difficulties, ladies and gents. We will be back with you shortly. Members of uh, as members of the the audit committee. Um, sorry, I'll ask you to to repeat that second the second part of the question, please, if you don't mind. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was saying, seeing that the, this uh, company is supposed to be an empowered company. Yes. Um, the the um, like the transformation phase, the fact that it is a transformed company when it, it came transformed since it came in as a big company. Um, at the shareholders level, you have already alluded that it's 51% uh, women and over 51% black. But uh, you would believe that an ideal picture would be that at the board level, uh, that should be the case as well. Yes, and uh, also ideally, according to me, at least, uh, it would augur well if uh, shareholders were to be able to to nominate uh, someone to to go, not necessarily to represent them, but to, to go and be part of the board, mm -hmm. so that the experience also the skills transfer. Is also goes into the owners of the business. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you. thank you, thank you for that. On the um, on the question around board composition, um, the current board of the the company is one hundred percent black. 
Um, and of that 100% black, it's also 40% uh, women. Um, and in terms of, so I think I've already answered the question around around board representation. Um, but I think that's that's something generally for the for the company to consider um, going forward. Thank you. Yeah, and 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 you have got three Africans, black, and you have got two colored South Africans also who are black. So 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 that's the current composition of the board. Yes, I'm not yet a youth, but yeah. Sorry, Chair, I'm just add, um, in terms of having just shareholders, uh, you know, attending board meetings, unfortunately, in terms of, you know, there's, there's, there's a local the competition law, you know, so um, you have to have a certain level of shareholding to be able to have presence, you know, for you to be at a board meeting and for you to be exposed to certain levels of information. Now, arguably, the, you know, this, um, this company has a certain line of, you know, you know, a certain mission that it that it does. So, but unfortunately, those laws do apply to everyone. It applies, you know, whether it's a, a BE scheme or whether it's not a BE scheme. So, um, you need to have a majority shareholding. So, in other words, more than fifty one percent of the shareholding for you to get sort of access to all information of the company. I'm talking outside of the confines of an AGM. So, those restrictions will apply irrespective of whether it's a BE scheme or not. The big take out that, you know, listening to the answers that the lawyers have, have provided, Mr. Pungo, is that you and other shareholders, you are entitled to elect and vote for uh, directors of your choice. The most important thing is to look at their independence, their skills, their experience, because surely you will want to be represented by people who have got the requisite skills and the requisite experience because it's your money that you know you are basically baking by putting such people so the answer is yes you have got the right to elect and nominate uh, nominate elect uh, people to be on the board there was this gentleman sorry before uh, he may i kindly ask that whoever asks a question stand up please yes because of the video recording, we really, really yeah. like you guys to stand. Thank you very much. I'll come to you. This gentleman, I had just highlighted him and that gentleman, and then you will come in. Sorry, unfortunately. Let me please stand. Thank and you again. Your name is again. Please. Thank you again, Chair. It's Sarani Budlamini. Thank you, Lord. All the way from KZN. Uh, I just want to, can you please elaborate since? You have also touched uh, that we will be receiving payouts in November. I received an email and it was uh, saying, uh, oh, it was mentioning that it will pay out the dividend at a rate of 49 cents per share. Yes. Or, or we, after payment to SARS, it will be 39.2. Mm -hmm. Kindly elaborate since now you have given us the 12 rand comma 69 cents, which is the rate or what 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 share rates will you will you pay us in terms of kindly elaborate in terms of that? Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So the 49 cents per share is the dividend that the board has declared per individual retail company share. Then SARS needs to take their 20% cut. So the actual cash per share that will be paid into everybody's bank account is going to be that leftover number. The 37, if I get my math right, 39, 39 cents per share. Now that actual size of the dividend, the 49 cents, came from the level of cash that was sitting in that retail company bank account after we had received the dividend on the all mutual shares that it owns. We had paid off some of the preference share coupon, we paid a few costs, that's the cash that was left over. You can't, it's not a good idea to pay 100% of the cash that's sitting in the bank account. You wanna make sure that you've got enough to be able to pay costs until you get cash in again. But 49 cents was a safe number to pay and still be able to pay costs over the next couple of months. We'll have to see how much cash is left after the next old mutual limited dividend. We'll then see how many costs we're paying, what we'll need to survive for the next six months, and then whatever's left over, we look to declare again to shareholders. Yeah. So it's difficult to predict what that number is going to be. 
If if I may just explain this, and I will use an example, right? A very simple example, which probably a lot of us can follow. So just think of the 1266 that you mentioned earlier as a cow, right? Which produces milk. And the milk is the 49 cents that you get a share of. So if you decide to kill the cow, the 1266, will you get the milk tomorrow? You won't get milk tomorrow. So therefore, you want the cow to leave but you continue to take the milk, which is the 49 cents each and every year. Does it make sense? So you are not, getting, you are not going to get the 12 run 66. No, you keep the 12 run 66 and we feed it and it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But it produces more milk, 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 and you get a share of the milk. Up until one day, five years, you say, no, 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 no. I want to add so that it becomes bigger or I want to cash out and leave. Does it make sense? Thank you. Much better than my explanation. Thank you so much. My name is Fuman Tlekani. Just as a suggestion, I think it's, it would be good for Bulazila to have some kind of the first one hour to yes. educate most of the guests because I can guarantee you, yes. you use the word coupon. Those guys here on the faces suit, they know what's a coupon. I yeah. know what's a coupon. I, guess. Piece, I follow but you. But the bulk of the people here, they will not understand what's a coupon. Yeah. But the way coupon is an interest, just yeah. make it easy for you. Yeah. So if you can educate Thank. more people, it will be better. Thanks for the suggestion. That's 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 very useful. The gentleman there, and then I go back online again. Yeah. I'm Petros Ndlovu. I'm representing a shareholder. Thank you, sir. I, I would like to know if I bought the shares for my daughter or for my son, and they didn't nominate me as their. Oh. As the one who gonna get the money if they passed away or something, what will happen on those shares? You might need an answer for this. And they're still young. I get so so they are minors. He, yeah. Did you get the? Did you follow the question? Yeah. Think, understood. Yeah. Um, so that the, the those shares would be dealt with in the, in the ordinary course in terms of inter interstate succession. Effectively, as uh, I think it was just explained earlier, the uh, the shares would fall into the estate of the of the deceased, and the person who's empowered by the master of the high court to deal with that estate would deal with them in terms of inter in in, ter in terms of the laws of interstate succession. So, for instance, it might be different to the extent that that. That person who has passed away already has a child. Sorry, I didn't get whether whether you they're minors. The children are minors. Yeah, yeah, they're so, minors. Yeah. So those shares, so those shares will be dealt with in that way. And to the extent that you are the person who is meant to, in, in terms of the um the rules, is is eligible to receive those shares as the heir of the deceased, those shares will be transferred to you. But as I explained earlier, to the extent that there's any issue. Um, as it relates to who the heir is. So for instance, if the heir isn't you and it's a person who doesn't qualify as a black person, those shares would then, then be transferred to the warehousing trust and cash would be paid out to that relevant person. Okay. Did you get an answer? Perfect. Then. Let's TMS online. Any hands, questions? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. There are a few written questions and some raised hands. So the written questions, we have a couple of shareholders asking the same question, which is, can we get uh, a meeting recording uh, directly after the meeting? How do we get hold of the meeting recording? That's just a couple of shareholders are asking this. Let me yeah. wait. If you'd like to be address that, and then uh, I can uh, take the raised hands, Chair. Thank you, TMS. Um, my team is saying it will be made available on the website. Yes, we'll yes. make it available on the website, Thank and you. then we'll... We can send a notification when the link is up and running. Thank you. Okay. You're in. Go ahead, TMS. Yeah. Uh, shareholder Katlejo Moeng, uh, we see that you've raised your hand. If you could unmute and ask your question. One moment, Chair, while the shareholder unmutes. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Katlejo Moeng. I'm a shareholder. Um, so my question is, um, wasn't it possible that um, on the forms that we filled in when we um, um, took the share scheme as as beneficiaries, was 
Isn't there a place where we could buy maybe list beneficiaries um, for in case, God forbid, we pass on before the dividend uh, gets paid out so that you can know who should you pay the dividends to or who should be listed as beneficiaries on our behalf? Should we pass on before the time? Yeah. Hi, Katleho. Um, in terms uh, of the the requirements of of any um estate laid process, you could still nominate a beneficiary and note it down in your documentation. However, as um, Nanga Elia mentioned, the course of law will determine where the estate should go and who should be responsible to administer it. So you can nominate people. However, at the end of the day, whoever is listed at the Masters of the High Court as the relevant person to take out the estate will be the one that will be recognized. Does that help you? Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Can I, can I also ask another question? Sorry for this. Um, so I'm asking on behalf of my mom. She's also a, a shareholder. So she's married in community of property. So in the case whereby maybe maybe her assets and my father's assets maybe are in their estate at the moment. So in the case whereby she happens to pass or to pass on, is it possible that she can take a separate or open a separate uh, will or estate to list these shares on, or she should just list them on their estate still together as they are married in community of property? I believe that the latter would be correct and that you would need she would need to list them as part of the all of her other assets. Yeah. Thank you. So can I make a suggestion? And I'm looking at my fellow board members here and to the gentleman's suggestion here. I think we need a roadshow of some sort where we spend you know the whole day basically answering most of these questions because they are very good questions it shows that we've got shareholders that are genuinely interested in the welfare of the company as well as their investments but they need to be more empowered and more informed in terms of how these things work and i think it's one step that we probably didn't uh take yet, but now Having listened to the questions, I think it's absolutely necessary that we have a roadshow of some sort. We can have two, one in Johannesburg, one down in the coast, whichever coast, Eastern Cape, Northern, well, Northern Cape is not in the coast, uh, KZN as well as Western Cape. So let's, let's, let's just do that. Are shareholders comfortable with that proposal? The reason why we are running out of time and i know you have got a lot of questions i will take one two more rounds of questions but let me just complete online and then take two three questions in the in the room oh, tms any more hands online thank you. thank you chair there's only one more online and it's uh, akona chabalala shareholder if you could unmute and ask your question hi again everyone uh akona chabalala so I just want to find out, um, will the financial statements be sent to us or how will they be made available? Thank you. The annual financial statements should be on the All Mutual Bulatela website. For those who don't have access to the website, meaning they don't have the technology, um, singular. Could probably... Will you be in a position to assist those? Sure. Um, in the event that you don't have um, access to the internet, you can contact us and we will be able to send it through to you in whichever means um, that's suitable for you. So if you want to receive it by post, we are happy to arrange that for you. All right. I'm going to take three questions from people who haven't asked a question. I've recognized that gentleman, this gentleman, and that gentleman. Okay, let's start. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. 
the question was okay sorry the question from the shareholder um, is that he would like to know that since he is a shareholder in a big establishment such as Old Mutual, how is it benefiting the shareholders? Are, are shareholders able to assist people in the rural areas in which um, shareholders hold their shares? And can they provide support in order to obtain business proposals or other ideas on how to support shareholders in the different areas, rural areas in particular, where he comes from? It's okay. I, I really want to understand the question before I answer it. <laughs> Is he proposing to assist other shareholders with business ideas? And how is can you just Clarify that for me. I, 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 he he would like support from old mutual to assist shareholders that may have business. Oh, he has got a business proposal that he wants to pitch to old mutual. Will old mutual be interested? Not me, like Pella. Second, because you are still there. Yeah, the company is not going to be able to do the business program. So, the company is going to be too big. It is I happen to be a managing director of one of the businesses within Old Mutual. And I can tell you almost on a daily basis, there are a lot of people who call me, Clarence, can we pitch this idea? And I always say, come, let's hear it. Do we, you know, support all those ideas, make them come to life? No, not all of them. Some have come to life. I would say majority have not, because some of them are not, you know, within our space or things that we are interested in doing. So, but we do point people to the right place, in, you know, if, if, so we also have what we call an innovation hub in our space. We allow people to come in that space, try their ideas and the like. If they work, we partner with them. If not, we don't partner, but we point them towards other uh, other entities that will be in a position to help. So I'm not saying your idea is going to pass. I'm saying, well, if you have well, got a great idea that makes sense, you all mutual, let's engage. It's just like, again, I want to repeat, like I said to the gentleman, it, just because you are a shareholder, it doesn't guarantee you that your idea will be accepted by old mutual. Thank you. I, yeah, the second question. Hello, everybody. My name is Kafbet Manka. I am a shareholder. I just want to know how many shareholders are successful. Are successful. So there were about 30, I can't remember the exact number, oh. but it's roughly 38,000, a mix of individuals and groups. So 38,000 people managed to give us everything that they needed to buy the cutoff date in the application process. And there were a few things that you needed to do. One was make sure that your cash behind the shares that you're applying for is in the singular bank account. Second was giving us a completed application form. And third was giving us all of the supporting documentation, including all the FICA documentation. So there were a lot more applicants, but only 38,000 had actually managed to do all three. And what we did in Bulatela is we couldn't figure out a way to cut people out of that 38,000, that would be fair. I mean, how do you decide? You just leave men out. Do you leave people over a certain age out? That's not fair. So we said we'll make room for all 38,000. Thank you. Oh, Lono Kunumayo, a representative here. Here, Lona, here, Bulazila. Return. Oh, Lona, Stelo, Mina. Now, one of the calculators in this nigger is a one I will vote. Go to the other spread. Zule Uti is in a equal misity, Macondana no pet as Gazan. Men having been a witty glare of cat. Umboos and your umboos a witty. He bought a lady Elkhorn. You can't have any money as a day. Umang Abbe Umang Abbe Linga Yi. Then a little sipping the cellar. Oh, 
<laughs> so, so, so basically, wants to know for those for for the benefit of Taskin and Len and Raymond here, he's, he's, he's saying, uh, you know, if you have already, and I'm 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 trying my level best to <laughs> interpret it the right way. Have 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 you mis um, abused their 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 funds? And if you haven't abused their funds. Why should we charge you? We must just bring you back into office as directors. That's basically what he's saying. So, it's a very good suggestion. Very good suggestion, by the way. Thank you. We'll get to the resolutions again. <laughs> and he calls the voting buttons, the, the calculators that we were given. Yeah. This is the last one. And then, yeah. Uh, morning. Uh, my name is Onele Ludidi. Uh, sorry, Che, you are dealing with people who don't understand the market. No, we no, just no. want a, uh, a good return. Thank you. Uh, but my my worry is, uh, I've been fortunate that I've been dealing with Old Michelle in some funds, and I won't lie, the last two or three years, Old Michelle haven't been doing well uh, in terms of the interest, and some of us bought a little bit. Mm. And I, I was hoping if there's someone who can answer this, if how they, see, they foresee the future of this uh, company so that at least in, in five years, when they mature, we can at least buy more. Thank you. If you go to the website of Old Mutual and you read up its strategy, it's got a very simple and clear strategy. And it's anchored on what we call an integrated financial services company. And as part and parcel of that, we 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 we, we believe first of you know we've got businesses that are quite strong in South Africa, and yeah, I'm talking about Omlaksa. Omlaksa is the life license. I mean, the life business that we have. We have got old mutual insurer. We have got the old mutual investment business that is in South Africa. These are very strong businesses, and they have performed reasonably well over the years. At the same time, we have got growth opportunities that are out there. And one of the growth opportunities that we have is the banking uh, venture that we're currently uh, building. I don't know if you have read about it or you have listened to our group CEO, Ian Williamson, talks about it. We believe that it is a very good investment and that all mutual, if we pivot our entire organization behind it, is going to be a very successful organization and it is going to be very much competitive into the future. Well, we have also identified some growth nodes such as in China. We have got a joint venture with an energy company in China. It has got good prospects. We believe that we just need to execute the strategy in that business. And if we do so, we should be in a position to grow our business. That's the future that we see. How is the outlook? So in South Africa, it's very difficult. Me and you, we know. In Africa, it's very difficult in this current environment because of the cost of living, you know, the interest rates going up and all those things. COVID was not kind to all of us. And we are emerging from that environment, but we are rebuilding the business. And the business fundamentals are very, very strong. If you look at our balance sheet, she can talk so eloquently about it. She's part and parcel of managing that balance sheet. It's very strong. Well-capitalized business, strong solvency. And we believe that, you know, we can sustain the dividends that we're paying to our shareholders while the business itself is also performing going forward. So from an outlook perspective, my answer is, Hell no, you are at the right place as a shareholder of Old Mutual. This company has got a great and bright future. That's the reason why I'm wearing dark glasses to make sure that I can see in terms of that future. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, to my uh, to Taskin. Thank you, Raymond. And do you know why Buncile is here? In case you guys say that guy who is currently chairing the AGM is an employee of Old Mutual, we don't want to hear from an employee of Old Mutual, we want to hear from somebody who's completely independent of Old Mutual. She is the lead independent director. Just in case, you know, you guys say, you know, Old Mutual is sort of controlling everything. So th thank you for allowing us the opportunity to address your questions. 
we now have to move to the formal part of the agenda. But before I do that, I just need to thank each and every one of you. I'm quite excited, actually. You know, as a boy who comes from Limpopo, you know, I, I was born in a place called Sibasa and I grew up in a place called Guiani. To hear people engage with their investment the way you have done today makes me very proud. You are just ordinary South Africans and you decide that, that you, know, you want to invest in a company such as Old Mutual, you want to shape its strategy going into the, into the future, and you want to leave a legacy for your children, for your families. And the level of engagement today has indeed you know, made me very proud. And it is something that I'm going to take back to Old Mutual, to its board, that they have got shareholders who are fully invested in the company and they are fully engaged with the company. So thank, thank, thanks to each and everyone. Give yourself a nice round of applause for that. And in accordance with Article 18 point, I mean 11.18.2 of the MOI, I have that demand that all resolutions shall be decided upon on a poll, meaning you would have to vote for them. May I ask TMS and Singular to recap the voting process and to explain how shareholders will vote on the resolutions. They will explain what that calculator that gentleman referred to operates. TMS? Thank you, Chair. Here with a few pointers on how to cast your votes. All beneficial owners or their representatives who have requested to vote would have received a link to the voting platform to either their phone number or email address. Please click on the Vote Now link and it will direct you to the voting platform. Are there any shareholder beneficial owners who have registered for voting but have not received ac access to the virtual voting platform? If you have not received the voting link, please use the Q&A button to notify the moderator who will attend to your request. You will notice that the voting platform contains all the resolutions which have been published in the Notice of Annual General Meeting with your votes automatically defaulted to abstain. You may vote on all the resolutions simultaneously by defaulting all your votes as either for or against or keeping it as an abstained vote and then clicking on the submit button at the bottom of the electronic ballot form. You may also indicate your votes individually per resolution by selecting the relevant option for, against, or abstain on a resolution by resolution basis. Once you have voted on all the resolutions, scroll down to the bottom of the page and click submit. A message will appear on your screen confirming that your votes have been received. Please note, once you click submit, your votes cannot be retracted and revoted. As such, please ensure that you have selected the correct option on a resolution, either for or against or abstain. The voting is open to online shareholders and you may ex exercise your votes anytime during the meeting. Shareholders who registered at the venue and who have received a voting device, calculator as you call it, will have to cause the votes after each resolution is put to the meeting. A vote now prompt will appear on the screen of the device. To vote for, press the number one on the device. To vote against, press the number two on the device. And to abstain from voting, press the number three on the device. I would repeat that. To vote for, press the number one on the device. To vote against, press the number two on the device. And to abstain from voting, press the number three on the device. Another message will appear on your screen indicating that your vote for, against, or abstain has been received, indicative of the selection you have made. Should you wish to change your vote, simply press the relevant key or button which corresponds with either for, against, or abstain. That is one to vote for, two to vote against, or three to abstain. I hand you back to the chair. Thank you. I hope everybody understood the instructions. All right, let's move on. In terms of clause 15.5 
of the MOI, two of the directors of the company, Askin Ismail and I, Zakanit Lawrence Natengwe, have been appointed as directors by Old Mutual Limited in its capacity as holder of cumulative redeemable no par value class A preference shares in the company. So Taskin and I will continue as directors of the company because we have been re-elected by Old Mutual as a preference shareholder. Let's move on to you know, uh, the presentation of the annual financial statements. The audited annual financial statements of the company for the period ended 31 December 2022 including the requisite stationary reports were made available on the company's website from the 27th of June, 2023. I will now refer you to each of the resolutions proposed to be adopted at this AGM. The full text of each resolution was included in the notice of the annual general meeting and will also be displayed in full on the virtual voting platform at a time when a resolution is called to be voted upon. I will, in the interest of brevity and for ease of reference, refer, refer only to the general subject matter of the resolution, meaning I won't read the entire resolution again. I would like to remind you of the following voting threshold required for each of the resolutions. In order for each of the ordinary resolutions, which is resolution one to resolution number eight to be passed, the support of more than 50% of all voting rights exercised on the resolution is required. In other words, for something to pass, it must be 50 plus 1% and above. So let's start with ordinary resolution number one, the election of a director. And this resolution is to elect non-executive director in accordance with the requirements of the company's MOI being Buisiwe Makunga, who is eligible and has offered herself for election as a director. Shareholders who have received a voting device, meaning the calculator, please cast your vote now. All right, let's move to resolution number two and resolution number three which is the election of director appointed by the board since the last annual general meeting. Voting will take place by separate resolution in respect of each proposed election. Resolution number two is to elect Simpiwe Heming Somjala, who is not present here today. Shareholders who have received a voting device, please cast your vote now. Let's move to resolution number three, to elect Raymond David Fenner, who is our current audit chairperson and is an independent non-executive director like Ms. Ms. Makunga, as well as Mr. Nob Somchala. Shareholders who have received a voting device, please cast your vote now. Then let's move to ordinary resolutions number four to number six, which is the election of audit committee members. Remember again, audit committee members must be independent non-executive directors of the company. We elect the following independent non-executive directors as members of the company's audit committee until the conclusion of the next AGM in 2024 of the company. Voting will take place by way of a separate resolution in respect of each proposed election. I will start with ordinary resolution number four, which is to elect Raymond David Fenner as audit committee member. Shareholders who have received a voting device, please cast your vote now. I move on to ordinary resolution number five to elect Simpiwe Heming Somjala as audit committee member. 
shareholders who have received a voting device, please cast your vote now. And ordinary resolution number six, which is to elect Buisiwe Makunga as audit committee member. Shareholders who have received a voting device, please cast your vote now. Thank you. Let's move to ordinary resolution number seven, which is the appointment of our auditors, which is to appoint or to reappoint Deloitte as auditors until the conclusion of the next AGM of the company. Shareholders who have received a voting device, please cast your vote now. Auditors are important to safeguard your interests as shareholders. And the last resolution, which is ordinary resolution number eight, is just a general authorization, which is to authorize each board member and the company secretary to do all such things as may be reasonably desirable or reasonably necessary to give effect to the resolutions proposed at this AGM, which is resolution one to resolution number eight, Shareholders who have received a voting device, please cast your vote now. Thank you for your votes. Thank you for your participation. Those beneficial owners or their representative who have not yet cast their votes may proceed to do so now in person or by means of the virtual voting platform. I will allow for the last time a few seconds during which you may do so. I'm going to pause, allow you for the last time to do so. And the virtual voting platform will be closed very shortly. If you have not yet submitted your votes, please do so now. I will give you a full minute to do so. Is it a full minute, right? <laughs> I, I know in South Africa, they will say, let's observe a moment of a minute of silence. And after 10 seconds, let's continue. And the minute is not that time. Thank you. Full minute done. The virtual uh, voting platform is now closed. Please take a moment to write some feedback on our screens uh, received from the Bullet Seller Retail Scheme shareholders. You guys, you gave us some feedback. Please go ahead. Let's see. Bullets a lot means to me a lot. A, a lot. I decided to get involved in the bullets a retail share scheme because I've always wanted it always to happens like team. this. When we're practicing it well, <laughs> then when we have to play it live, it just talked about um the shares that we can buy. I thought that um this might be the opportunity that questions are closed. I didn't know where I was going to start. Ask that, gen me, that lady right behind you to help you. It's about the money when I was growing up. Yeah. Oh, right now, it has encouraged me and taught me a lot in regards to saving. Like I said, I'm ready. Okay. No, no, I yeah. four, which is three boys and one girl. For me, it's going to be a very good investment because I'm not going to be worried about paying Lobola for my kids when they grow up. They will have money for themselves to pay their Lobola. Why not? 
Okay, I'm waiting for the results of the voting or for an indication if all resolutions have passed or if there's any resolution that haven't passed. Somebody must talk to me or show me something on the screen. And Mr. Chairman, we will be showing the results for you very shortly. Thank you. Just, Thank you, Chairman. If you'll just grant us one more minute. Thank you. I have close questions. <laughs> We will engage after. Technically, you know, these are conducted in terms of the Companies Act and all those things. So once you have closed one part, you can't go back to it. So we will engage after after the meeting. Thank you, Chairman. The results are on the screen. All right. I am pleased to advise that all resolutions have been passed by the requisite majorities. Full details of the result of the voting will be published on our companies. Uh, website and singular platform later today so you can give yourself a nice round of applause for passing all those resolutions ladies and gentlemen as all the business on the agenda have been dealt with i declare the annual general meeting close and thank you once again for your attendance and your active participation please take care and stay safe and see you next year thank you <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs>